We're about to have a look on board the new Cranky 67, but before we get into the boat, it's worth reflecting for a moment about the 67 foot Flybridge market. Very specifically, the 67 foot market, we're seeing a lot of boats, particularly from Italian builders at this length, coming up with some really interesting designs. And very interestingly, although we're told more cabins is always better, what we've seen is people coming up with some really great three cabin designs of what would normally be a four cabin boat. And this is exactly that. We'll take you on board and we'll have a look. So we're up on the flybridge now of the Cranky 67. I really wanted to start here because I think it really reflects the level of detail, finish and indeed space. You can actually see the 78, the big sister to this boat just over here. We tested this a little while ago, saw her at Dusseldorf about three years ago now, I think it was. This flybridge doesn't feel too much smaller than that and it feels just as luxurious, just as well appointed. Look at this, beautiful teak capping along here. I love this stainless steel work. This is very similar to the big sister, the 78, helps with the Italian flag, sets it off, I think. But this teak capping runs all the way round. We've got beautiful stainless steel work here. And overhead, we've got an awning, so you can have this area open to the sun or you can have it enclosed well, sheltered, I should say, with these uh, poles, these carbon fiber poles. There's a nice little detail over here I just want to show you, which is this little stand-up shower here. So you can, if it all gets a bit too much up here, you can cool off. So we're just going to move forward now under this, this hard top and past the dining area. We're taking in just the size and how deep this seating is here. And also this big lump of teak here, this table, we have levers that extend out so you can use it as a full dining table and we also have this rather impressive high-low pedestal underneath which will drop it down into like a bar table or even an, in an infill as a sun pad. But the level of engineering, the level of detail, the quality of materials is unarguable. It's very impressive. We've got the same level of quality here on this wet bar. You know on some boats this would just be a GRP lid. Here we've got a, a split teak top you can see with a brush steel inlay, brush steel galley top there, beautiful locker doors, fridge freezers and, and ice boxes behind there. And then as we come further forward, still underneath this, this hard top, we're into the helm area. And this is an area that I really want to focus on because there's a lot of thought going on here. I think it's one of the best you're going to find at this length. So sat here on the flybridge helm, there is a lower helm below. We have two huge screens here. It's an IPS boat, so we've got the joystick control. Quite like this to be the other way around, so you've got the joystick behind the throttle control, so that way you're not leaning over the throttles to get to the joystick, but we'll talk to Cranky about that. But really good display. But what I really like, these seats are great. You can sit right back in them, and obviously you can stand up as well. And if you do stand up, the view is fantastic. But here's the bit I really like. You can get one, two, three, four people across here. We've got four deep, comfortable seats across the front, which means that a family of four can all be up here when the boat's going along at 20, 25, maybe 30 knots, going through the water. This is a really great spot. And I, it's not the only boat to have four seats across the front. It's just always worth pointing out. Some boats will only have two and maybe some people back there in the dinette. It's not the same experience. You really want to be up here forward facing. So we're now moving through into the main deck salon. Two things strike me straight away. The headroom. From the outside, you can see the glass sections look huge. The boat doesn't look out of proportion at all, but you can see the size of the glass, and that's reflected in the headroom we've got here. And as we come forward, you can see these glass sections. Probably, I mean, big for this size of boat. We'll have a look at this one here. From down here, all the way up to there, incredible views. You've got really high quality stainless steel st stanchions on the outside. You've got a great view going overboard. There's nothing stopping, you no know, bulwarks to get in the way. We've got a central dining area here. So it's a 67 foot flybridge yacht, so I would expect there to be a separate dining area. This is quite a grown up layout. This has got the dining area forward, sort of super yacht style. Often boats of this size have the galley aft with a dining area opposite or in the vicinity, but it is really useful to have the dining area and the galley close by, and I'll show you why. That galley, not the biggest, 
It's got a good amount of storage running all the way around it. We've got cold storage here, fridge and freezer. But because the dining area is here, it means that you've got more space for storage here. So we've got specialist crockery storage here, and that takes the pressure off the galley. So you've just got your food stores there. So having the dining area and the galley together, be that at the aft, or in this case with the galley forward, is really important, really practical. You can never have too much storage on board a boat. As I say, the galley aft, they tend to be a bit, bit bigger. Obviously they're connecting with the aft deck, so they just feel a bit more open. But you've got lots and lots of work surface here. You've got a four burner hob, you've got a good deep sink, and you've got a, an upright fridge freezer. So a lot of space there. The one thing that people might like, as I said earlier, you don't notice the galley. It's not, you know, it doesn't intrude into the uh, living space. Horses for courses, galley aft, galley forward, cranky have gone for the galley forward. So we're now down at the lower helm, which is sort of nicely separated from the living area without anything heavy handed. You can see through with these little glass panels here. So it works, it's sort of separate, but part of the deck salon. Good visibility going forward sat here this is where you're going to be for longer cruises you know if you're going to be going somewhere for a few hours you're probably going to be sat here within the air conditioning so what have we got we've got twin 1350 ips volvo pentas ips power units that's 1000 horsepower each i'm reliably informed that will push this boat to around 28 knots close to 30 knots but once you've got a lot of cruising gear on board and a bit of growth on the hull 28 is probably a bit fairer it's a good helm position I'm really loving some of the, uh, the seats we're seeing, particularly from the Italian builders. These seats feel good. They've got really good upper and lower back support. They're fully adjustable. It's a nice helm position. We've got the throttle controls back here, the joystick control forward. Quite like, like I said, upstairs. I quite like that to be the other way around or ideally next to each other. But really lovely teak steering wheel. Two big MFD screens there. It does feel like you could sit here for a long time on a long cruise, be very, very relaxed. Before we leave the uh, helm area, this is a really nice minimal dash and they're giving a lot of space over to these huge MFDs. There's cup holders on the other side, which is really important. One thing I would like to see is maybe like if there was like a little recess somewhere for a bits tray or a ridge around here, it wouldn't look as clean, but it would be more functional. The attention to detail on Cranky is getting better all the time. And on these flybridge boats and indeed on the A46 we looked at before, I've been really impressed. The style is subjective, of course, but the quality of materials can't be argued with. And this is beautifully done, high quality material, lots of stainless steel and chrome, beautiful finish here. I really like the floor, this kind of waxed wood that they're using throughout, but it's actually really grippy as well. It's got like a texture to it. I think it looks really smart. And we're gonna follow this wood, this floor, all the way up. There's a slight step up here, and that gives you this that little bit more headroom in the cabins below but follow the wood all the way down the stairwell and I'll see you on the lower deck. So I think I said in the intro, this is a 67 foot boat, which would normally be four cabins. And indeed you can have this cranky 67 as a four cabin boat, but rather like the Ferretti 670, it's a three cabin boat that's stealing all the headlines. And we'll show you exactly why. So although this is a three cabin boat, it's worth pointing out that the three cabins are all of a really good size and they're all en suite. I was actually quite surprised when I came into this. This is like the third cabin. We have a forward VIP. It's a good size. It's a nice cabin. It's got some big hull side windows. Come and have a look around. You've got that large port there. And more importantly, you've got a large en suite that pushes all the way forward and also acts as a day head.
So you've seen the full beam owner's stateroom. You've seen the double cabin there. We're gonna bring you forward now to the VIP. That's the day head access I was talking about. So the two reasons why this is the VIP, the first one is it's, it's far away from the other cabin. So if you're, the family could be back amidships and you have your guests up here. So there's a nice separation between two families, for instance, but also it's the better appointed cabin. It's slightly larger and it is very well finished. Come in and have a look. So we've got another good size en suite. We've got these whole side windows. We've got plenty of storage in here. Double bed, obviously, no big deal, but it's not too high. You know, sometimes you come with just a few inches up and it would just feel a bit more uncomfortable. This is a good height. We've got under bed storage. We've got a nice little idea here. A little bureau drops down so I can sit here, should I wish. Either use it as a study or as a dressing table. And a TV screen here. This is very, very secure and it needs to be. We're right up in the bow here. You don't want this falling down, so it's very well secured. We have another hanging locker here. And I'm gonna show you some more of the storage that's going on. I said it before, you can't have too much storage on a boat and some boats frankly don't have enough. Cranky, you know, to, uh, to be credited, they've tried to work in storage everywhere. So you can see here, just places the squirrel stuff away is what you want. So like I say, lots of storage on board this boat. Cranky have worked very, very hard. And like I also said, you can't have too much, but just as an example, we've got a really deep bins here. Could be good for linen, stores that you're not gonna use. Then we've got more shelving here, but then we've got this lift up area here. Let me get out of the way. Laundry area here. If you don't want a laundry area, that will just be a massive storage down there. Just like to see yacht builders working as hard as they can to find space for the uh, owners. So we're gonna step through this side deck door now, which is a very useful thing to have. And we're gonna come forward to the four deck lounge. And this is another really great example. You can see how boat designers now are carrying that beam just that bit far forward and it's winning you more space. We have this really wide, even though we're, look, we're nearly up in the bow here, right? But look at, the, look at the width we've got here. That also shows you how far forward they're pushing that superstructure to win you more space for the salon, the dining area, the helm. But the width of this is excellent. I really like these chairs, like proper cha deep chairs, you know, very convivial. This is the place you're actually gonna come and use because the upholstery and the seat design is so good, but you've also still got space for a sun pad. Now, obviously, the one thing that that does mean, using all this space for lifestyle, does mean that we don't have a lot of space up here for, as, as the working foredeck. So we've got the anchor here. It's all gonna be operated from back at the helm anyway, but it would be quite nice to have just a little bit more space. But when you're on board the boat, this is the area you wanna use. It's a trade-off, but a little bit more foredeck space. Having said that, there's deep anchor lockers each side here so your fenders lines and everything are going to go in there worked quite well and just if you look around over here we've got these neat little uh, club tables so they will just fold out to serve the guests lots of details like these little pop-up lights on the deck I'd imagine at night in port or at anchor for that matter but certainly in port this is going to be a fine place to be so I'm all the way back here now in the uh, on the aft deck and I'm just looking at these lovely little winches here for your stern cleats we've got a really good bulwark gate here so you can get off the boat on the side really easily and I'm walking down this deck and it's really wide the size of this glass it's <laughs> crazy um beautiful looking cleats quite like to see another wire or section here I know that it's sort of gives you a great view out, but especially if you've got kids on board. But anyway, great side deck. This overhang again makes you feel so safe coming up here. And then the bulwark rises up and now you're really, you know, as we move forward, there's more motion forward. So as we move forward, cranky up the safety aspects, you feel really safe. You've got this bulwark, we've got this stainless steel rail. I'm feeling very safe. It's thigh level. 
very good. Deck's the same to each side. And I really liked having that bulwark gate at the back. There's one to each side as well. It's worth pointing out. We said there were lots of interesting things going on at 67 feet. It's an odd number, but there you go. But we were right. And this cranky 67 has added to that. At 67 feet, you are very much on the, uh, the border between owner operation and crew operation. But I think with its IPS and these easy decks, this is a boat that you can look to self-pilot. And I think you'd be a very re rewarding boat, should we say. You've got two easy helm stations. You've got in that three cabin guys, you know, a great family boat. And I just want to focus in on that three cabin layout for a second. I appreciate it. And I'm I've spoken to lots of builders here saying that more cabins is what people want. And that's fine. But I think it's great that people are offering you something else. If you don't need four cabins, then what do you do with that space? Well, as we've seen here, you create a huge studio, as Cranky call it, and that gives you moment, it gives you relaxation because space is relaxing, and it gives you a really great place to work from, to think from, to read, and then you've got the cabin itself. I can see the three cabin version of this boat doing very, very well, and let's be, let's be honest here, most four cabins are quite small, they're bunked, it just feels like a much better use of space. So the three cabin phenomenon doesn't look to be going anywhere on these 67-foot flybridge boats.